The Second Battle of the Marne, French, Second Bataille de la Marne, the 15th of July to the 6th of August 1918, was the last major German offensive on the Western Front during the First World War. The attack failed when an Allied counterattack, supported by several hundred tanks, overwhelmed the Germans on their right flank, inflicting severe casualties. The German defeat marked the start of the relentless Allied advance which culminated in the armistice with Germany about 100 days later. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Background. Following the failure of the spring offensive to end the conflict, Erich Ludendorff, chief quartermaster general, believed that an attack through Flanders would give Germany a decisive victory over the British Expeditionary Force (BEF). To shield his intentions and draw Allied troops away from Belgium, Ludendorff planned for a large diversionary attack along the Marne. Topic: <laughs> German attack. The battle began on the 15th of July 1918 when 23 German divisions of the 1st and 3rd Armies, led by Bruno von Mudra and Karl von Einem, Assaulted the French Fourth Army under Henry Gouraud east of Reims, the Fourth Battle of Champagne, French 4e Bataille de Champagne. The U.S. 42nd Division was attached to the French Fourth Army. Meanwhile, 17 divisions of the German Seventh Army under Max von Bohn, aided by the Ninth Army under Johannes von Eben, attacked the French Sixth Army led by Jean de Goot to the west of Reims, the Battle of the Mountain of Reims, French Bataille de la Montagne de Reims. Ludendorff hoped to split the French in two. East of Reims the French 4th Army had prepared a defence in depth to counter an intense bombardment and infiltrating infantry. Their main line of resistance was 4 to 5 kilometres behind the front, beyond the range of the enemy field guns, it was a continuous trench line—to prevent infiltration—dug on a reverse slope so it could not be overlooked by enemy artillery observers on the ground. Between the front and the main line of resistance were two lines of strong points, again mostly on reverse slopes. The French gun line behind the front was lightly manned, but the remaining guns fired frequently, so the Germans did not detect its weakness from rate of firing, although aerial observers did spot a concentration of field guns behind the main line of resistance. German offensive tactics stressed surprise, but French intelligence based on aerial observation gave clear warning and from 27 prisoners taken in a trench raid they learned the hour for the attack, the German bombardment was scheduled for 12.10. The French opened fire on the German assault trenches at 11.30, naturally shaking the confidence of attackers. When the Germans opened fire they pounded the almost empty French front line and their counter-battery fire struck many vacated gun pits. The attackers moved easily through the French front and then were led onward by a rolling barrage, which soon was well ahead of the infantry because they were held up by the points of resistance. When they encountered the French mainline they were ordered to rest, regroup and wait until their field guns were moved into range. They attacked the main line at 8.30 the following morning, an hour after their schedule. They were stopped by accurate fire by the bulk of the French artillery. They tried again at noon, but failed. A French counterattack gained little ground, but convinced the German commanders that they could not prevail. The 4th Army was now able to send reinforcements to their neighbors to the west who had not fared as well. In the west on the opening day of the offensive the defenders of the south bank of the Marne had to hold the river bank by enduring an intense three-hour bombardment, including many gas shells. Under this cover stormtroopers swarmed across the river in every sort of transport—including 30-man canvas boats and rafts. They began to erect skeleton bridges at 12 points under fire from the Allied survivors. Some Allied units, particularly Colonel Ulysses G. McAlexander's 38th Infantry Regiment of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Division, the Rock of the Marne, held fast or even counterattacked, but by evening, the Germans had captured a bridgehead on either side of Dormans 4 miles kilometers deep and 9 miles 14 kilometers wide, despite the aerial intervention of 225 French bombers, dropping 44 short tons 40 t of bombs on the makeshift bridges. Ludendorff regarded their advance as the very pinnacle of military victory. The French were reinforced by the British 22nd Corps and 85,000 American troops and the German advance stalled on 17 July 1918. <laughs> <laughs> Allied counter-offensive The German failure to break through, or to destroy the Allied armies in the field, allowed Ferdinand Foch, the Allied Supreme Commander, to proceed with the planned major counteroffensive on 18 July. Twenty-four French divisions, including the American 92nd and 93rd Infantry Divisions under French command, joined by other Allied troops, including eight large American divisions under American command and 350 tanks attacked the recently formed German salient. 
The Allied preparation was very important in countering the German offensive. It was believed that the Allies had the complete picture of the German offensive in terms of intentions and capabilities. The Allies knew the key points of the German plan down to the minute. There is a legend, possibly true, that engineer Captain Hunter Grant, along with the help of engagement coordinator and engineer Captain Page, devised a deceptive ruse. A briefcase with false plans for an American counterair attack was handcuffed to a man who had died of pneumonia and placed in a vehicle which appeared to have run off the road at a German-controlled bridge. The Germans, on finding and being taken in by these plans, then adjusted their attack to thwart the false Allied plan. Consequently, the French and American forces led by Foch were able to conduct a different attack on exposed parts of the enemy lines, leaving the Germans with no choice but to retreat. This engagement marked the beginning of a German withdrawal that was never effectively reversed. In September 1918 nine American divisions about men joined four French divisions to push the Germans from the St. Mihiel salient. Earlier, in May, Foch had spotted flaws in the German offensives. The force that defeated the German offensive was mainly French, with American, British and Italian support. Coordinating this counterattack would be a major problem as Foch had to work with four national commanders but without any real authority to issue order under his own name. They would have to fight as a combined force and to overcome the major problems of different languages, cultures, doctrines and fighting styles. However, the presence of fresh American troops, unbroken by years of war, significantly bolstered Allied resistance to the German offensive. Floyd Gibbons wrote about the American troops, saying, I never saw men charge to their death with finer spirit. On 19 July, the Italian Corps lost 9,334 officers and men out of a total fighting strength of about 24,000. Nevertheless, Bertolo rushed two newly arrived British infantry divisions, the 51st Highland and 62nd West Riding, through the Italians straight into attack down the Adra Valley the Battle of Tardinois French, Bataille du Tardinois, named after the surrounding Tardinois Plain. The Germans ordered a retreat on 20 July and were forced back to the positions from which they had started their spring offensive. They strengthened their flank positions opposite the Allied pincers and on the 22nd, Ludendorff ordered to take up a line from the upper OURCQ to Marfort. Costly Allied assaults continued for minimal gains. By 27 July, the Germans had withdrawn their centre behind Fier en Tardinois and had completed an alternative rail link. The Germans retained Soissons in the west. On 1 August, French and British divisions of Mangan's 10th Army renewed the attack, advancing to a depth of nearly 5 miles the Allied counterattack petered out on 6 August in the face of German offensives. By this stage, the salient had been reduced and the Germans had been forced back to a line running along the Ain and Vessel rivers. The front had been shortened by 28 miles. 45 km. <laughs> <laughs> Assessment The Second Battle of the Marne was an important victory. Ferdinand Foch received the baton of a Marshal of France. The Allies had taken 29,367 prisoners, 793 guns and 3,000 machine guns and inflicted 168,000 casualties on the Germans. The primary importance of the battle was its morale aspect. The strategic gains on the Marne marked the end of a string of German victories and the beginning of a series of Allied victories that would in three months end the war. See also First Battle of the Marne Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading Greenwood Paul 1998 The Second Battle of the Marne Airlife Publishing Limited ISBN 9781840370089 Nyberg, Michael. 2008. The Second Battle of the Marne. Bloomington, Indiana University Press. ISBN 978 0 253 35146 3. Skiro, Fraser. 2007. Massacre on the Marne. Pen and Sword. ISBN 978 1 84415 496 8. Reed, I.L. Of Those We Loved. Preston, Carnegie Publishing. ISBN 978-1-85821-225-8. Farwell, Byron 1999. Over There, The United States in the Great War, 1917–1918.
New York, Morton Paperback. ISBN 0-393-32028-6. Topic: External links. Major J. W. Anderson, F.A., with the 10th Field Artillery at the Second Battle of the Marne. The Second Battle of the Marne, 1918. British 62nd Division's part in the events. Celebrations of the anniversary of the victory of the Battle of the Marne at Mo Church in 1916. Great map of the Second Battle of the Marne. Click it to enlarge to full size.